Hi, guys. <sighs> okay. I don't know if this was like a weird prank phone call. I don't even understand to this day what happened, how it happened, why it happened. Yeah. But I called the Greyhound because I was hours away from home, but not hours enough where I had to take a plane. So I was going to take the Greyhound to get back home for the holiday weekend. And yeah, I went, got my tickets. They told me to show up at this time because their machines were down and they couldn't sell me a ticket over the phone but just be at the train station at this time and I would be able to purchase my ticket there. Well, I decided I was going to take the first Greyhound, which was at six something in the morning. Great, fine. For safety reasons, I had brought a friend with me to the train station. So we hopped in the taxi, we went to the train station, <laughs> we got to the train station, taxi driver left. He didn't stick around. This was way before Uber. Okay, I'm old. What do you want? So we're at the train station and I was like, um, kind of looks dark. Kind of looks like there's no lights on in this train station. The cab had left. There was nothing but, um, like a marathon gas station across the way and it was kind of like a uh it's like a really super busy road I, it's just a main road so crossing that is not really an option so i was like okay well let's just use the change we'll call the cab they'll come back and then we can go back home and i'll just try to come back later if i have to do like a thing where I come, I buy the ticket for the next train and I have to sit around here for a couple hours, fine. I don't understand what happened. Why would they tell me to be here and there's no one here and I just, was this like a prank? Cause this really sucked. So we get the change, we go to the pay phone and as I'm dialing and my friend is standing next to me, here comes this dude out of the dark He was weird. He starts leaning up against the, the payphone thing and I'm like, oh God, please answer the phone so I can tell you or have your guy come back and pick us up and take us home. Yeah, they didn't answer and it went to this really weird like loop thing where it said, oh, I'm sorry, all of our agents are busy and then it hung up. Well. And those days, kids, when you didn't have a cell phone and you put your money in this pay phone thing, the phone would consider something like that, that somebody answered the phone. So there went all my change. So then I did it again and something happened and it ate all my change again. And this creepy dude would not go away. He was asking us a million questions. What's your name? If we walked away, he would start to follow us. It was getting really creepy. So I told my friend, I'm like, we're gonna have to run across the street. We're gonna have to like totally frogger this crap. So instead of running across the street, here comes this other guy <laughs> out of the darkness who is a lot older. And he was like, oh, you know, is that guy bugging you? And we're like, yeah, kind of. You know, and then we're like, oh my God, is he with him? Like, who is this guy? Where did he come from? And so we're like, yeah, and we kept walking. And he was like, okay, stay there. I'm going to go get my car. But there was no cars in this parking lot. I don't understand what happened. No cars around. So all of a sudden... He comes driving up in this really old four-door white car. I don't remember what the car was. And he's like, come on, get in. I'll take you guys home. And my friend is like, no way in hell. And I'm like, we get in this dude's car and die, or we 
we stay here and die with this creepy guy. This creepy guy just seemed really mentally unstable, the things he was saying, and he just was so creepy. Like, I can't explain the level of creepiness that this guy was. He was probably like... 20 so maybe he was just drugged out of his mind and just walking around trying to pick up some women I don't know dude was creepy and the other guy said the other guy that was trying to offer us the ride um, he said that that guy was a homeless guy and he always hangs out around the back of the train station he's like don't go around the back of the train station so we're like okay okay so then he's like I know this seems really weird he's like but I'd rather know that you're safe and I'll take you guys home He's like, I don't want to leave you here with this guy. We're like, okay. So my judgment told me to get in the car, even though my friend was freaking out and she's like, I'm going to kill you. And I was like, well, I know you don't want to be left here alone. And this guy seems all right. Like after a couple of minutes of talking to him, I could kind of tell like he was not, he was not with this guy. He was genuinely concerned for our safety. He was like, Two young lady adults should not be out here on your own. You know what happened? Why would you be out this late? He was kind of, he was a lot older. He was like somebody who looked like he could be somebody's older dad or possibly grandfather. So anyway, we got in the car and he took us home. I tried to offer him gas money. He was like, no, no, no. Uh, he ended up telling us on the way to driving us home that he actually was homeless and he was living in his car but seeing us in that kind of situation he wanted to help us out and all that kind of stuff so then he was so nice and took us home and you know we were in a dorm so we just were like oh we'll walk to our building it's over there we didn't have him drop us right in front of our building of course just in case but um we walked through the one building and out the back and then to our building which was right next to it so, um, yeah, that was probably the most daring thing I ever did. And I mean, maybe there was something else that I'm just not thinking of, but nowadays I feel like in that kind of situation, unless you're calling an Uber and unless you know, like even now, there are a lot of Uber drivers who are very unstable and Uber is getting a very bad rap right now. I feel like as long as you don't know somebody and you're getting in somebody's car, you're still risking, you know, your own safety. So, unless you know somebody through that person and that person knows somebody, you can vouch for them. But I mean, this is some dude who just came out of the darkness and, you know, the middle of the night. I've had people say, oh, well, you know, that could have been like your guardian angel. That could have been you know, your father up in heaven looking out for you and sent somebody to you, whatever. Um, I don't know what you necessarily yourself believe. I don't know what to believe about the situation still to this day. And it was a very odd situation to be put in, so... hope we could get to know each other better and be friends and I'll see you later. Bye. Well, that's the end of my story time. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll be doing a vlog this week as well so keep your eye open for that and I will see you real soon. Stay positive.